With me now is Professor Nadal Gassoum, who is a speaker here at the Faraday Institute summer course, and he's given one talk and he's giving another talk today. Uh, thank you for being with us, Professor. Welcome. Uh, I just wondered if you could maybe summarize your own contribution today, because you have two, uh -huh. uh, two lectures, so maybe a, a, a summary of what both are going to be uh, giving to the participants. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, the first uh, lecture was titled Lessons from the Golden Age of Islam and Science. Uh, the aim of that lecture was first to review what kind of science uh, was developed during that period of time from let's say the 9th century to about the 16th or 17th century. What were the factors that uh, helped science develop, cultural, religious factors, institutional factors, uh, etc. And to look also about, uh, to look at why it declined, what happened, um, what was the relationship between the science that was developed at that time, the philosophy, the theology, the religious injunctions, etc. And the idea was not to just remain on the historical trajectory, but to also try to see if anything can be learned that could be useful to us today as we struggle with issues of relation, relations between modern science, Islam, religion in general, etc. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I thought that was a fruitful and viable enterprise to combine the history with the philosophy of science, the Islamic injunctions, etc., and to try to link it to today. Mm -hmm. And this afternoon you're going to be addressing what specifically? The second lecture this afternoon will be about modern science and Muslims' relation, uh, Muslims' reactions to it. Yeah. Uh, so modern science, I will be explaining, brings some new ideas, new methodologies, etc., which tend to be a bit challenging to the religious uh, culture of Islam, of Christianity, of theism in general, etc. And how have Muslims reacted to this new challenge, this development of a new, completely independent, sometimes very bold and challenging set of methodologies, theories, results from science, etc. Yeah. So I'll be reviewing the different, the different schools of thought, the different uh, ideas that philosophers of Islam cont in contemporary times have presented. Uh, the pros and cons of those ideas, then I'll present my own contribution, how I think modern science can be looked at and related to uh, from the Muslim cultural point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully that will be also useful for people in general, not just Muslims, but uh, Christians, believers, theists yeah. in general today. Um, I noticed that one of the things you mentioned in your talk today, uh, in this morning, was this question of uh, institutionalization. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if you could, in a nutshell, explain what your main point was about that. Yes, uh, one of the things that we note when we review the history of science in the Islamic civilization was that there were some institutions that emerged and helped propel science forward, in particular universities, in particular houses of wisdom, as they were called, which were centers of research, if you like, uh, observatories, hospitals, which turned, which became sort of institutions in their own right. And that was certainly a favoring factor, a, an encouraging positive factor in the development of science. However, what, when we look more closely, we find that those institutions were not systematized, that, for example, these universities did not have a unified, agreed-upon curriculum, that it depended on who was lecturing and who was teaching what and who signed up for, for what. There was no agreed-upon um, examination process. Uh, the observatories were at the mercy of the patron or the ruler, so they would be erected, they would function for a few years or many years, and then they would disappear. Some of them disappear within two, three years, some of them disappear after 30 years. Uh, the funding process for research was also somewhat haphazard and I think I think this was one of the main reasons why science declined and then sort of disappeared in the in the later centuries of the uh, history of Islam that science was never institutionalized in a systematic way that it could continue on its own or be supported by a, an independent process that would not be at the mercy of the ups and downs of the empire or the ruler or the society at large or this or that. Professor Gassoum, thanks very much for your insights. I encourage people watching this video to look at the articles that you write from time to time, published in uh, uh, publications like Nature and others. And I believe you have a blog, is that correct? Do you blog? Yes. Uh, 
I blog intermittently. I write a column for Gulf News every two weeks or so. Uh, I tweet so people can follow me on Twitter and get all the news about my publications and uh, videos like this, etc. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.